Thanks for watching Deeper Than Red. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. When the United States was a very new country, there was a great American chef who influenced America's food forever. Unfortunately, many people don't know who James Hemings is. This is the day you will hear his story. James was born in 1776 to Elizabeth Hemings. His half-sister was Martha Jefferson. James and Martha's father was John Wales. One day, John died, and the people he enslaved, which included nine-year-old James and his siblings, Sally, Robert, and Peter, were inherited by their half-sister, Martha, and her husband, Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson was passionate about French food. Thomas longed to have a personal French chef who could create his favorite dishes, but he couldn't afford one on his government salary. When Thomas became the American minister to France, he decided to bring James with him to Paris. The trip to France changed 19-year-old James's life forever. James trained with famous restaurateurs such as Monsieur Combeau and practiced cooking with chefs in the home of the Prince de de Condé. Hemings likely learned to make macaroni and cheese during this time and popularized this new dish when he returned to America. Eventually, James became the head chef at Thomas's home in Paris. In France, slavery was illegal and Thomas had to pay James wages for his work. Even though James could have sued Thomas for his freedom, he decided not to. No one is sure why he did it, but it wasn't easy for a black American in the Western world. James probably didn't want to be separated from his family. Thomas also promised James that one day he would make him a free man if James could find a suitable replacement to take his place. When Thomas became Secretary of State, James traveled with him to New York City and Philadelphia. As head chef, James taught the other chefs what he learned. When they returned to Monticello, the Virginia plantation had grown to over 600 enslaved men, women, and children. Thomas wrote that he made a 4% profit every year from the birth of black children. Some of these enslaved children were Thomas's own sons and daughters. We don't have any records of James's thoughts, but all of this must have made him very sad. James wanted his freedom more than anything. He spent many hours training his brother, Peter Hemings, to become his replacement at Monticello. One day, Thomas decided Peter was sufficiently trained to become his head chef and finally gave James his freedom. James left Monticello and found work as a cook in a Baltimore tavern. One day, Thomas sent a man named William Evans to Baltimore to ask James if he would become a chef at the White House. Thomas had become president of the United States and wanted James to work for him. James responded yes, on the condition that Thomas would write to him directly and ask James himself to work as a chef in the White House. Thomas never wrote to James, and James continued to work in the Baltimore Tavern. Life probably didn't turn out as James had hoped. He was an exceptional chef with experience cooking for royalty and heads of state. His recipes were shared amongst American chefs throughout the United States. And yet he worked as a cook in a small Baltimore tavern with no family or friends. In 1801, James cooked for one last time in Monticello. He was paid $30 for several weeks of work. It was probably too painful to work on a plantation where his family was still enslaved. James left Monticello, never to return. Two months later, James died. He was 36 years old. We honor James's life for his culinary contributions and for his triumphs and the tribulations he endured. 
So the next time you're eating macaroni and cheese, whipped cream, creme brulee, or meringue, please think of James Hemmings and share this story. Thanks for watching Deeper Than Red. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media.